Great. Hello to everybody. So good morning, good evening. So and also for sure a good morning to our guest because very soon you will discover our guest. So we are here to our industry edition of Now and Together uh, from Lena Pelle Fair. So welcome to our social community because I know it's a, now we, are, we have this kind of meeting every week since uh, several weeks. And I'm very, very pleased that all the time you are inspired by our mantra. And our mantra is not only inspire you, it's also disrupting the industry and rejuvenate, modernize. And this is the reason why all the time we have visionary people, uh, creators, uh, industry leaders. So this is the reason why this time I'm more and more excited than ever because thanks God we have this uh, two very special guests coming directly from LA. So let me introduce today's guest, Nicolas Haveri. Hello, good morning. <laughs> good morning, Nicolas. Uh, artist, designer, disruptor, visionary from La La Land, in Los Angeles downtown. And also, Gustavo Servin. Hi. Morning. Yeah, morning. So, also artist designer from La La Land in Los Angeles downtown. So, tell me about a little bit about you. So, what what is this La La Land downtown LA? So, who you are? Because I, before to start to go in deep, I like to to know a little bit more about you. Sure, yeah. Um, so uh, La La Land is a manufacturing facility in downtown Los Angeles. We specialize in uh, luxury goods, luxury leather goods, shoes, bags, wallets. Um, and we're getting into, you know, we're trying to branch out into even more um, apparel, stuff like that. So, um, and we're one of the few uh, large manufacturing companies in the U.S. And um, yeah, we've been here for uh about a year and uh, enjoying ourselves. Wow, that's great. So, so you are just giving us some, some tips. You are artist, designer, and in a, in a few seconds, we will see where you operate. And you also work directly making your stuff. So perfect, because this is the topic. We are located talking about the latest trends from LA. And we are talking about underground scenario and also making. Let's see where you are located. I like it to show to and share to, to my community this video. Where are you here? I love to show this video. I love to show this video because we arrive in the, in the deepest part of the topic. We are talking about repairing, customization, manufacturing, and also uh, you guys, you can give us the latest tips from Los Angeles street artists. So tell me a little bit where you start. What is this? What they were doing these guys? So I think uh, the, the difference for us is that we're able, we are really a part of the culture, the sneaker culture, of the uh, street culture of LA. And uh, I think that's, that's an advantage to us because we're able to really see what is going on as well as uh, get inspired from it and take that inspiration and put it into completely different pieces, whether it be you know, taking inspiration from a shoe and bringing it to a completely different item or 
taking inspiration from a shoe and putting it into something different. Um, it's, it's yeah, it's just uh, being able to not only be a designer, but as well as create our own stuff has given us kind of you know uh, an edge on what we're able to do, and that I think that's that's what's given us that step ahead uh, over a lot of people. I don't know if you want to add anything? Yeah, to that. yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, he, he, uh, we're, so I think the, the thing about us is um, not only do we design and conceptualize, we also um, are shoemakers, you know, we build, we sew, we make. Um, so uh, I think, yeah, like he said, it's kind of an advantage we have in the industry. Uh, if somebody wants to come to us looking, for, looking to have something made, um, you know, we just, we, we know about, uh, we know a lot about the ins and outs um, as opposed to just designing and handing it off to somebody else. So uh, how, how everything started? So it's curious to see how everything started, how you get inside and get involved in this kind of uh, uh, customization concept. So for me personally, it started uh, quite a few years ago. I was, um, I, I, I went to school for art uh, fine art and uh, with a focus in printmaking and after that um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do so uh, I had a passion for art I also had a passion for sneakers so I began painting some shoes just for fun uh, trying to spruce up some pairs that I had um, and then I got into uh, full-on customization uh, w with painting with, and then I would um, display shoes at local shops um, anywhere that would let me just put some items uh, in their store and from there inquiries started to come in um, and that really jump-started uh, uh, customization painting customization and then even cleat customization for uh, a lot of athletes and um, that's really what put us on the map at first um, we got into uh, customizing um, footwear for athletes and um, and the NFL had even started doing uh, the My Cause My Cleats one week or one weekend out of the, uh, the football season where uh, players could wear any kind of customized cleats that they wanted to. Um, it just had to be auctioned off afterwards and then those proceeds donated to charity. Um, so that's kind of where I, you know, got my feet wet in the whole customization world. Um, from there, I just wanted a new challenge, so um, I wanted to learn more about what goes into actually creating footwear. Um, so I apprenticed at a shoe repair shop for a couple years, and uh, I just started to take shoes apart and really see like what it takes, uh, the, you know, what it looks like on the inside, and um, kind of started to teach myself, um, you know, footwear. Uh, just full reconstructions, uh, in, including repairs, um, and uh, started to just get more excited about the direction I was going in. So I started to take some shoemaking classes where uh, I learned how to um, make patterns directly on the last, uh, original patterns as well as existing sneaker patterns. Um, just started to put some of my own shoes together. And, and, and again, I, I got another uh, bump in um, followers and people reaching out for customized footwear. And um, that helped bring me out to Los Angeles. And then once we got here, um, I mean, then we just had, I mean, everything you need to create is all in one centralized city. Uh, so, um, I mean, we had, no choice but to grow from there um so now it's been about a year that we've been uh in la la land uh full time and um yeah i mean every day we're learning new stuff um and it's been a real blast i mean it's a passion for both of us uh to be in fashion especially in footwear and um that's kind of how we've got to where we are now wow that's so you, you touch on several points that the industry is very interested. Right. So you know, customization, in a way you are building this, it's also knowing uh, how to manipulate uh, 
how to work and how to workmanship, and also connected with materials. So, which types of materials you 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 use? So, we, we, do you have any preference? Of course. I already see the letter is something you like it, but how do you choose it? How do you pick it, this, this type of materials? I think it's a lot about the concept. I think the concept for us is what dictates the material because a lot of the times uh, we will come up with a concept that you know is disruptive but classic at the same time. So there's uh, like, like for example, that wingtip shoe um, I can show you right now. Uh, so it's a, it's a wingtip Jordan 1 that we customized. Uh, so the brown leather is kind of a classic for, you know, a dress shoe. And we tried to make this dress shoe Jordan 1 looking. So, you know, the concept dictated the material that we would use. Um, but, you know, the concept was still different and disruptive. Yeah, that's so interesting. And... What is this, the connection when we talk about repairing? So, which are the secrets? So when we talk about repairing, you know why we like it to talk about repairing? Because repairing is a way to be sustainable. Right. Because when you design, you can design long lasting products, but you can also uh, design something with types of material that one day could be repaired. So uh, come on, I think you, you are doing this. Yeah, and um, so when it comes to repair, um, you know, for the most part, we are building from the ground up. Um, so when it comes to repair, uh, like I said, I apprenticed in a, uh, with a cobbler in a shoe repair shop for um, a couple of years. And really, I feel like most, when it comes to repairing, most of the ideas have been figured out or, or most of the, uh, the the tricks of the trade have been figured out over you know uh, hundreds of years um, so for us we kind of uh, stay true to the um, traditional ways of uh, making and repairing and um, like I said for the most part we're in customization but when it comes to repairing I'd say the thing that we get uh, asked the most to repair are uh, the soles of sneakers um, the thing with the, uh, you know, we work a lot with um, rebuilding Nikes because that seems to be where people or what people are most most interested in is um, kind of, uh, you know, uh, what you see on the screen right now is the Jordan 1, which is one of the most popular, if not the most popular sneaker um, maybe ever. Uh, it was designed and uh, released back in 1985, and even still to this day, it, it's it's a very strong uh, shoe, and a lot of it has to do with the man who wore it, uh, Michael Jordan, being the greatest basketball player of all time. Um, so, yeah, a lot of people come to us to completely rebuild using materials of their choice. Um, but like I said, when it comes to repairing, a lot of times people will bring us a you know a shoe maybe from the 1980s, the 1990s, uh, and the sole has started to crack and crumble and wear away. And, um, and even, even with these soles crumbling away, the, the shoe itself, the upper, is still a very valuable uh, piece of history, piece of art, um, and people are very, uh, uh, it, it's very, a very sentimental thing. Um, so in order to make it uh, uh, wearable, and uh, to prolong its life, um, we just remove the rubber sole on the bottom, whatever's left of it, and then we take a donor sole from a, uh, an actual pair of uh, Jordans, so we will buy another pair of shoes simply to remove the sole and apply that sole to the, uh, to the pair, to the pair of shoes. Yeah, that's cool. So you buy maybe more than a pair of shoes, and then you decompose, and then you put together again. So it's, it's a very complex way to recomposing the fact. But right. which is the name of this process? Did you never give any name? So um, I guess the name in the industry is called soul swapping. Um, so, you know, uh, not only do people, uh, or not only do we remove uh, the soul to put on a newer 
sold that is the exact same, but there's also a market for um, taking soles from, for example, Adidas shoes and putting them on Nike uppers um, or vice versa. You know, there's, um, there, there's so many things that you can do uh, just with sole swapping and so many um, pieces that you can put together and, and that just become a whole new, you know, a whole new shoe um, when you're doing this. And I, I think that's really fun to mix and match and uh, uh, just create something that, that doesn't exist. Yeah, so I, I have another picture I love so much. So talking about, so what is this? Can I show this? Yep. Everybody? So, um, on the left hand of your screen, uh, that is a pair of uh, Travis Scott Air Jordan 1s, uh, one of the most popular silhouettes probably since they released in 2018, 18? Uh, could have been, 2000, actually I think it was 2019. Um, so uh, you see me just taking the shoe apart uh, to start preparing for um, uh, pattern making um, and really just getting a feel for uh, you know, again, the ins and outs of this shoe, uh, you know, what everything that goes into uh, the construction of that shoe. Um, and then on the right hand side, uh, we did a, a fun little project that required some some rubber dipping. Um, so we dipped the soles in some black rubber. And uh, not only did it give a, a really cool effect, uh, but it also will uh, prolong the life of that sole. For a little longer and you know as that uh, black rubber wears off um, it could be brought in again for another dip and then really you're not wearing away that sole at all wow that's cool and i also have another video i like <laughs> Starting to uh, to sew. So uh, anytime we make anything, um, we build the samples first, um, just so we know everything it takes, and and we could uh, accurately uh, teach um, other people to then uh, construct these pieces. Oh, so so this means first you have your concept, you disassemble and yep. then reassemble in a different way. And then you immediately teach to somebody else. And this is the reason why you are in a manufacturer, correct? So I like it just to yep. repeat, to get the steps. And then they yep. repeat it. So you can also start from one piece customization to repetition of the customization, right. be like this. Oh, cool, yeah. that's, I guess, I just got now talking with you, so wow, that's great. So and we like to um, yeah, yeah. Uh, go, go, go ahead. Manufacturing process, I think it's very important for us that the quality of our sneakers is there as well as that these sneakers are gonna be long lasting and comfortable. So it's very important for us to know how they get constructed so we understand what it's going to feel like on your foot. And, and really, even in that process, we try to improve comfort. Um, and, uh, you know, with us using our own materials, these materials are generally uh, better than, you know, what Nike manufactures um, and, uh, and longer lasting. Oh, why? In this case, they are longer lasting because it's one piece in a certain way. Right. Yeah. I, I want to jump inside with some question I seen that people are attending asked to us, what about cost, which is a cost more or less of what personalized pieces more or less, of course, because maybe depending how full the calculation. Yeah, our, our prices uh, range quite a bit, um, depending on what we're doing to the to the actual sneaker if it's a complete reconstruction like you're seeing in that video. 
where we're gonna take a whole shoe apart and bring it back to life from scratch. Um, it, it, it usually ranges about $2,500. That's where it starts out at. And depending on the materials uh, and what we're using and what the concept is, because sometimes, you know, our concepts get much more expensive, like this one right here. Um, so that this shoe is, it, it uses snake skin. It uses uh, printing on a very high end uh, Nubuck leather and uh, the bottom, the bottom of the sole has artwork in it. Um, the soles for the shoe are very expensive. Um, and the process of actually putting our own artwork under the sole is, uh, is, is very time consuming as well as expensive. Um, so, uh, you know, the, some, something like this as a, as a made to order as a one of one uh, would be probably closer to the $3,500 range somewhere around there. And how, how many pieces you, you can make in, in the same way? Um, it depends. Uh, so we offer a, a made-to-order service where people can um, request, you know, everything that they, uh, you know, they, they pretty much design the entire shoe themselves, and then we bring it to life. Um, so there's, you know, the one-of-one one route, and then there's also, you know, every month we will... Um, conceptualize and bring to life our own uh, idea and then release it to the public. And um, generally we, we keep it limited, you know, anywhere from, you know, we've done runs of 10 pairs um, to probably like 25, uh, 30 at the most um, for releases. Uh, so it, it really varies. Mm -hmm. but we, for just to understand, I ask you this just to understand of course, which is the process of customization. Right. Customization has different types of process, but I can, I can understand that you really craft like uh, in every simple pieces, and then it's something like one by one, and one piece to the other one is not really the same because each of them can have slight differences. Absolutely, right. yeah. Yeah. Every, right. every Every single shoe is handcrafted here in our, in our facility. In the facility yeah. And I also so. love it. I love it that you talk about bringing to life because what, what we notice is shoes are made by leather and leather is one of the perfect material <laughs> to bring to life several times. Yeah. But there is somebody asking, can we give to you, imagine a client, a custom, customer want to give to you their own letter or their own fabrics. So can you also manipulate these types of materials? Yeah, absolutely. We've done that before where uh, a client brings their own fabric because it's, you know, a jersey that they like or anything like that because um, we do all kinds of stuff. Um, and yeah, it, it just, uh, it's just about us, you know, testing the fabric, making sure that it works, that it's going to do what we need it to do and kind of develop with that fabric in mind, uh, again, so we can keep the comfort in mind, so we can keep the longevity of the sneaker, whatever it is, whatever item it is that we're making with that fabric. And, uh, a lot of people, what, um, uh, what some people, uh, really like to do is they'll bring in their old, uh, you know, their old Louis Vuitton bags, their old Goyard bags. And, and they're like, you know, uh, I, I, now I want to, you know, I've had this for long enough. Uh, I want to get a new bag. Now it's time to turn this bag into something else. And, you know, so um, a, a lot of, uh, a lot of people like to turn their luxury handbags or um, luxury totes into, into shoes, into sneakers. Yeah, so you are already answering uh, to one of the, uh, a tender question, which is they can bring their leather jacket or they can bring any types of products that they have it. But I assume that most of the time you, you have more uh, logomania products and then you can remanipulate. Right, definitely. So logo is, is important in this case, is yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, and a, a lot of the people, you know, like like the, you know, that rare stuff. So we we've done stuff with um, 
with the Gucci Ghost that was very limited. So we did a couple uh, a pair of sneakers uh, with that, and uh, we've done we we've done a lot of stuff. We we did the Gucci scarf um, that that was also you know a little bit more of a higher price one. But these these are all you know things that we that we can do and we have done and um all, these these even get more expensive because um we try to line up the patterns perfectly so the g in the toe is uh you know very centered and all the g's in the back kind of line up and make that that uh, iconic gucci print that that you know very well yeah the pattern is very strategically placed on the materials that we use um, and, and cut very strategically as well so that once it's all constructed together, um, you know, as you see on that Gucci shoe, everything is, uh, you know, all the G's are, are vertical as they should be. And um, even on the toe, if you were standing over them, you would see that the, the toes themselves, uh, both the, uh, the, the toe cap and the, the vamp, um, the, the, the pattern lines up really well. So we take in, we take, you know, all these details uh, into account and, and really try to um, outdo ourselves even every time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's really amazing because I noticed that it's a kind of wave. So are there any other people like you that are doing something similar or which are the differences between the different artists in these types of uh, customization uh, yeah yeah i mean there's there's a ton of uh other people that are doing it you know out there as well um i think what really differentiates us is that we're we're not you know we don't we don't only do the gucci sneakers we don't only do the snake skin sneakers we don't only do the croc sn sneakers um we really pride ourselves on concept and telling a story through these sneakers uh, and the fact that there's, you know, a lot of things that came behind uh, the design as well as the detail oriented uh, things that, you know, you can see like with a sneaker, like the Gucci sneaker that everything matches or like the, this, um, or like that sneaker, you know, that uh, all the stars are the, the accurate size or the, even this sneaker that we have right here in front of us, you see how the print on the leather kind of follows it. This is a different piece and this is a different piece, um, but you see it kind of follows the, the pattern. Yeah. Um, even in the back, you see that these three pieces complete the skull. That's, that's what we really pride ourselves in is, you know, very detail oriented as well as um, very well thought out concepts um, that we can execute at the highest level. And I also notice showing this sneakers that you are using crocodile or alligator. Uh, can I can I share with the community the next video, which is this? <laughs> Okay, did you see it? Yeah, so, yep. What is this? Let, let explain us how, how was this working? Well, how did you treat this letter? Because uh, I think that you need to have some specific knowledge to work this exactly typology of skin. Yeah, um, yeah, when it comes to uh, skin like this, I mean, um, it, it not being a flat piece of leather um, really comes into play when you are uh, when you're cutting or, or even planning out the the concept. Um, so for us, I mean, uh, we love using crocodile just because of that texture, and uh, it, it just really gives a, a nice luxury feel to um, you know a, a, a pair of shoes or, or whatever you use it for. Um, another thing about crocodile is it is a very tough leather 
Um, and this stuff, uh, I, I have a pair that I made out of crocodile a couple of years ago. And, um, you know, even wearing them almost every day, they're still in great condition. Um, it, they'll, they'll probably last me the rest of my life. <laughs> Gustavo? <laughs> yeah, no, I, and you, again, like he said, the textures of the leather um, make it um, a little bit harder to work with and you got to know how to strategically cut it as well as, you know, when you're putting it together, you have to know that you need to skive it to the point where it's, uh, and you know, skiving meaning uh, reducing the leather a little bit to, uh, to so, so when it overlaps with the other piece, it doesn't look all bulky and, you know, you can feel it on your toe. So it's, it's, it's a harder material to work with, but it's very rewarding because of the look that it gives the sneaker. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we absolutely love working with it. Yeah, so this means also that you love to experiment different typology of skin. But I have one other question now. Do you, uh, do you have any curiosity to know where the skinning is coming from, uh, the quality? So how do you get these types of information? Or did you never try to ask uh, using a uh, letter maybe from Italy or maybe from U USA? So what do you, what do you think about it? Do you have any curiosity about transparency, traceability of the skin? Maybe yes. Yeah. At first, I mean, you know, it was just kind of trial and error. We didn't really know much about um, exotic skins. And, uh, you know, so we started working with one specific company um, and they provided us with a few skins to uh, kind of work with and test out and get a feel for. Um, and now this company we've been working with for a couple of years and they always present us with, um, you know, the grades of the skin that we're purchasing. Uh, as well as where, um, you know, how, uh, you know, all these skins are, um, hu yeah, tagged, humanely sourced. Um, and uh, so, yeah, we know where they're coming from. Um, we know a lot about the skins that we're using, yeah. And yeah, that's a, that's a very important thing to us, making sure that uh, we're doing a part to be as responsible as we can uh, when sourcing all these materials, not only the exotic skins, but also the regular leather is to make sure that the companies that we are sourcing from are doing their part in not, uh, you know, polluting this beautiful planet we have. So I, uh, our third partner um, has been in the industry for a long time, um, Alex, uh, you know, you know him up. And, uh, you know, he, he, he is the one that also often guides us to the companies that are doing the right thing. And those are the companies that we purchase for, from, which um, has a lot to do um, with the price as well, because, you know, we have to purchase from responsibly sourced materials. We don't want to go the cheap route and, uh, you know, have that on our hands where we're, we feel like we're doing something bad for the environment. So we, we try to do our part in sourcing as responsibly as we can. And Alex is a great help to that. Yeah, so that's great. I like it to see your interest because, you know, in our community, we have, of course, many companies of materials and sometimes they wonder to understand what designers are looking for types of information they want to know. And of course, understanding like if your customers are uh, the same interested in this type of things. We, we don't know what, what's, what's about California. You told me maybe yes. Yeah, no, I, I, think, uh, I think a lot of the designers here really really are interested in knowing, you know, not only that they're going to get their leather, but where their leather comes from and what the process to get it to what it, what it needs to be is. Um, you know, I, I can speak for us on that saying that, you know, we take very much interest on the, on the companies we work with to the extent that we're, if we're in the same city as the company that we work with and we've never visited the, the, you know, the place, we make it a point to see if we can make it happen to where we go and visit the uh, the factory. And we, we love that type of thing because we love to get to know not only the companies that we're getting to work with, but their process and what that looks like. So, um, and I think that's the sentiment around 
you know, all the designers around us at least. Especially in Los Angeles. Yeah. Yeah, it does change the pictures just to have a different view. Again, I, lo I also love this uh, picture. Mm -hmm. So what is this detail? So this was, um, so we had been exploring for a while um, the idea of a convertible shoe uh, that could go from a high top to a low top. Um, so we uh, ran a couple tests and, uh, uh, you know, messed around with uh, some, some concepts and we came up with this where um, you pretty much have an interchangeable uh, top piece collar here. Um, so really you could, you know, wear it like this or you could take it off and you could put your, your red one on. And really, I mean, the possibilities are endless. So um, any customer who purchased this shoe uh, can now, you know, if at any point they want to get a new uh, color collar or something like that, um, they reach out to us, we just make the collar and then they have another, pretty much a, another pair of shoes that they can, um, you know, that they can work with just, just by interchanging the collars. Um, and then there has been, uh, in addition to that, a lot of um, interest in uh, the low tops lately, uh, especially when it comes to a Jordan 1 like this. Um, so the fact that you could have both a high top and a low top in the same shoe and be able to switch back and forth at any point during your day, um, that's really what we were trying to do. And we've never seen it done before. Um, it's something that we've wanted to do for a while. So uh, we're really happy with how they turned out. Is that amazing? So really, because you can have, some, some people are saying, so nice, beautiful. I would, I would like to buy some, some set. So I have a question for you from our, our community. Some people ask, so what are the most challenging part of start, starting such types of business? So challenging aspects of this. I think it's uh, bringing awareness to your brand and, uh, and developing trust in your brand. You know, we've been able to do that because uh, we truly take pride on the quality and the concepts that we make and we don't put anything out there that we wouldn't, you know, wear ourselves or be, be happy with putting on our feet ourselves. So uh, I think that that, that is uh, the main hurdle to to get yourself a name uh, that people trust and I, I think at that point we we are there our clients truly trust us and uh, and are happy with with the quality that we're delivering so uh, I, I think that's that's the biggest hurdle but I think you know as long as you keep at it and uh, continue to uh, come up with concepts and different things uh, you know like they, we talked about disruption a little bit, and I think this concept is kind of a, a, an example. An example of that, a huge example of that, because uh, you know, uh, uh, it's something that just has never been done before uh, in in this in this sneaker culture uh, type of thing. So, and it was something that was very well accepted by the sneaker culture. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think just building a name for yourself, but I. I, again, I don't think it's impossible. I think it's just something that takes a little bit of time. So I don't. I wouldn't say it's hard to build a name for yourself, but it, it does take time, patience, and uh, attention to detail. Especially within the uh, the past five years, the customization world has exploded. Um, with not, you know, there's there's a ton of uh, shoe painters out there, and um, yeah, just in the past few years, uh, the the reconstruction of shoes uh, has exploded as well um so yeah just being able to uh, like he said it's a challenge getting I exposure of your brand but um as long as you just i guess stay true to yourself and like what you want to produce um that it will show you know it, it, it will it'll show in your posts it'll show in your pictures and um and that's something that we kind of pride ourselves on too um just being able to uh really just uh you know i guess what i'm trying to say is just be able to come through for these customers who are trusting us uh with 
in some cases, a lot of their money. And, um, you know, just based off of pictures that they're seeing on our Instagram or something. So um, for somebody starting out, it's going to be a challenge. You're going to run into people who don't trust you um, or aren't sure of the quality based on pictures. So really, it's just, um, you know, you keep on creating. You come through for your customers. You be completely transparent with them. If there's any issues, you bring it up to them before they ask where their shoes are. Um, so I think that's the most important is, is really just, um, paying attention to your customers and, and your followers and supporters. It's very interesting. I like to, the, I like you get very strong direction. So, uh, you, you were talking about passion, uh, you were talking about time, but also attention to detail. Let me say that. You also talk about a lot of knowledge, so competencies, because you need to have a lot of competencies. You were talking about trust. So we had one webinar where we said, sustainability is trust, trust and authenticity. But I like also to understand, but which is the age of your customer? It, it's really, uh, there, there's really no age, um, you know. No age. Yeah, inquiries for for people that want to buy shoes for their for their babies. Um, so we get inquiries about baby shoes, mm -hmm. as well as you know people that, that are in their fifties, sixties that you know want to buy something custom for themselves. Um, and it doesn't need, even necessarily have to be a Nike. Uh, it could be something that you know they saw years ago and they can't find it anymore. Or it could be something that, you know, they, they just like and they want to change in a different way. Um, and we can, we can make that come to life. Um, yeah, and, you know, it's not only uh, individual people that are our customers. It's also companies that want to come to us and do um, something larger. Uh, and, you know, they want us to make bags for them, for their uh, employees or they have a marketing, uh, you know, play that they want to gift out um, bags or shoes or something like that. Um, so our, our customer base really is is wide. It, mm -hmm. it it doesn't have an age or a really a yeah. It's it's just so wide, and it's it's been surprising to us as well. Um, you know, we thought we were going to be very uh sneaker uh nike the people that uh collect sneakers type of thing um but it, it's been so wide it's been surprising and, and right now i think in this industry um kids are driving this industry and pushing it forward um you know uh there's there's an event that goes on a couple times a year called sneaker con uh that is mostly done in the u.s but I th it's it's gone other places as well and you'll see 12 year old kids walking around, you know, with some shoes that they're, that they're trying to sell. So, um, the amount of interest, uh, in this culture from kids is unbelievable. And then there's the other side of that where, um, you know, some of some people who are uh, a little older, um, never had this kind of opportunity in, in their day, um, to have something like this made, like this is kind of a, you know, I would say a, a newer thing. Uh, by new, I mean within the past 10, 15 years. Um, and now they're realizing, wow, I can finally have something that, um, you know, maybe I wanted 30 years ago. Um, or, or maybe there's a shoe, yeah, 30 years ago that uh, is discontinued. And they're like, wow, I want to, now I, I, I want that shoe again. And, and we are able to make that possible. So interesting, there's sneaker can. Can I ask you more? So is that something like an event? Is yes. that sneaker con, so it's short for sneaker convention. Um, so it's the same as, you know, Comic Con is for comics and, and superheroes. Sneaker con is the same way for, for sneakers. Wow. So, and I have some question about this. Do you think that other markets like Europe, or like Asia, like China, South Korea, are there ready for these types of business or these types of customization? Absolutely, yeah. um, we, we actually go worldwide. Our, 
uh, some of our inquiries come from Europe and uh, the Middle East, and uh, we've gotten some from Asia. Um, but yeah, I think I think ev that this market is opening up worldwide um, right right now. I think it's a it's a very interesting time to be in in the market. This is really really interesting. I have also another question. It's a little bit tricky. Yeah. What the, so what the brand think about your job? Do you have any expression from the brands, the top brand that you are using? Um, you know, they've personally to us, they've never reached out, but I think, uh, uh, you know, I don't think they necessarily care. I think they, uh, we're in a completely different market um, because our price point is absolutely different than what theirs is, as well as, you know, they, uh, it, we're, we're, all, we're also doing promotion for them without them having to do anything about it because, you know, um, one might not be able to afford this shoe that you see in front of you right now, but they can afford something s similar that Nike releases. So I, I don't think that, you know, they, they, they have begun to embrace more customizers um, as of late. And I, what I compare it to is, um, is cars. Uh, I think it's the easiest way for people to understand. You know, you buy a car and you're like, oh, you know, I want, um, I want new interior in this thing. I want a new paint job. Um, uh, I want uh, TV, new engine, new engine, TV screens in the headrest. So um, it, it's the same way. Like somebody will you know, uh, either supply us their shoe or we will um, have a sourcing fee included with uh, the price where, you know, we're using a shoe that is now owned by an individual. And technically, I mean, they could do whatever they want with that shoe. Um, so that's, that's what I like to compare it to. And I think it's uh, a, a, an easier way for people to understand um, how we, I guess, get away with um, using a Nike product. And it's it's more of an art piece than than it is anything else. Really, it's a it's a wearable art piece because of the uh, especially for us because of the concepts that we're able to bring to life. Um, it, we 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 truly see it as more of a wearable art piece than than anything else. So now let me jump in another topic that more or less is already answering to to some of our guests. Uh, uh, questions how do you promote how do you are you uh, are you uh, how can you be in contact with your uh, client public I don't know how do you call them so I remember you was talking about Miami Super Bowl in our district so uh, what's happened in this in this place what what we are talking about um. So um, a lot of our promotion and, uh, and reach out to our clientele comes from our Instagram. Um, that, that is where we have focused on because that's where our most loyal following is, uh, is on Instagram. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's where we communicate back and forth with them. That's how we stay in contact with them. And, uh, you know, as far as promotion events, we, we often get... Um, get reached out by, you know, athletes or celebrities or stuff like that to make stuff for them or to be a part of something that they're doing. The uh, Miami Super Bowl, uh, we went to a pop-up with uh, Nate Robinson, who, who used to play for the NBA. Um, and it was, it was a fun event. We, you know, we were like, okay, the Super Bowl is in Miami. So we made crocodile footballs, um, you know, in the pink and teal colorways, which are Miami colorways. Um, and uh, we went and displayed some of our shoes uh, and got to get with, uh, with a couple of the players um, that were playing uh, in the Super Bowl and talk to them, give them some shoes. Um, and, you know, uh, we just build relationships like that with, uh, with the artists that are interested in what we're doing. And that, that helps us promote our, our product. And, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, we, um, we've built relationships uh, since we've started. And, um, you know, if we see athletes or uh, uh, celebrities, I guess, that are 
doing something that I feel that falls in line with our brand, um, we'll reach out and, you know, in, in some cases, we'll gift them a pair of shoes in exchange for um, them just uh, posting about it or shouting us out. And then from there, um, we just, we, we were building really solid relationships with um, a lot of influential people. And um, so that in addition to our Instagram um, and as well as word of mouth, uh, I think all of those kind of combine and are um, really our, our, our driving force, what drive people to, to us. And in all honesty, probably word of mouth is the most important one because that's, that's how it, it just shows the trust that we've built with our customers. Um, so, you know, word of mouth, when people are spending this much money on a pair of shoes and they're willing to tell their friends, hey, this is a good person to go to. Uh, you know, be, that, that means their friends are going to spend that much money and they're willing to, to put our name in that, in, in that bucket. So I think, you know, although, you know, the influential artists and all that stuff is important, I think the word of mouth is much more important because of the trust that comes behind that. Yeah, so in this case, you already answered to one of our uh, participant our community uh, question so how do you reach out the football player of course going to Miami uh, in that specific time you was in our district and then you talk with them you start immediately are you using any let me say communication agency or it's more directly very freshly at the moment we're we're just going direct i think we think that that's the best thing for us because that that's what aligns with uh our brand and our values you know we want to build a relationship with the person not with an entity in the middle great so the human the human feeling so you think that human feeling which is talking uh, shaking the hand touching the product it's yeah. still remain important for you Absolutely. Yeah. And, um, you know, we've gotten reached out by agencies as well, and we're, we'll entertain those conversations, but it is, it is important to know the person that you're working with, uh, to us at least. And, and in the beginning, when, um, when I was painting, uh, cleats for athletes, uh, a lot of times I would go through their management, um, or, or agents and, uh, more often than not, then the player themselves would reach out because they, they almost want to be a part of it. Um, they, they don't want to go through somebody else. They, they want to uh, have a part in, in their own creation um, and, and the, the um, I guess, the direction that they want to take it in. So, um, you know, even, even in times where we can't talk, uh, talk to the uh, athletes or celebrities directly, they will then, um, you know, have an interest in, what, in this final product and then uh, reach out to us. Yeah, and I have another question. It's interesting what you say because this really means that is a true and authentic way to customize. Because even if they are celebrities, they want to talk with you. So the artists, the makers, and in the meantime, the celebrities, which is a person that customizes. Right, right. I like it to ask. They are balls, they are made in leather, crocodile, and of course, leather in general. And there is a question and say, did you know that for American football, ball has to be in leather? It's the only product that they never replace other types of materials. So are there any types of connections sometimes originally with between the letter as a material and in this case american footballs um uh i guess i'm not really sure what the question is um you said that, uh, between the are there any relation between the letter and the ball for the american football um, that, I guess I'm not too sure of, uh, uh, it always seems to be the same type of leather, uh, it, you know, for NFL quality footballs, uh, 
you know, I'm, I'm not exactly sure where the, where they get their leathers from. Um, so for us, you know, in our case with the crocodile footballs, um, for us, it just worked with our theme. Um, the Super Bowl was in Miami. So we're using South beach colors, uh, you know, South beach colorway colors. Um, and, you know, especially with Miami being so close to the Everglades, that's kind of where the crocodile came into play. So um, for us, that's why we use the materials we use, is just because it falls in, lines with, uh, falls in line with our concept. So great, great answer. So concept is the first one. So you don't follow any types of story or any type of things that people tell you seems to be years that they was doing this and this and that. Mm -hmm. Great, very fresh, very disruptive. Right. So it also seems that you make bags. Right. So this is another tips about, which is the connection of these bags and the story around the products. Um, so we just, you know, we started out in sneakers and we just wanted to branch into more uh, different pieces. Um, you know, we've always been a fan of, um, uh, of just duffel bags in general, me personally. Um, and so one day we were just trying to, you know, we're sitting here brainstorming on what else we can uh, come up with. Um, you know, there's a lot of people, like I said earlier, using bags. Uh, they'll take the bag and then turn it into something else, like a pair of shoes or a wallet or something like that. In this case, we were trying to think of what else we could use to produce bags. So we thought of sports jerseys. Um, so the one on the uh, right hand side, the, the one that uh, Jackson, that one we did first and um, we just used two, uh, it, it, it requires using two different jerseys. Um, and after we made that, we just really loved that whole uh, combination um, and just started to run with that. Uh, and then with the tragic passing of Kobe Bryant, us being in Los Angeles, um, the bag on the left was our way of uh, kind of creating a tribute to him. Um, we never offered them for sale or anything like that. We just simply wanted to uh, make, a, again, a beautiful piece of art that will uh, sit in our studio, something that people can come and see and feel. Um, so that's really where we got our uh, how we moved into uh, bags. Um, our whole thing is customization. So, I mean, making a bag out of regular leather, um, you know, doesn't really, it isn't different enough for us. Um, so that's, that's how we, uh, you know, kind of moved in this direction. It's still a customized item. Um, it's still using uh, one thing to create something else, to pretty much uh, if you want to, if you want to call it uh, destroying one item or deconstructing one item to then create something new. Great. Right. Okay. was a lot, of, uh, a lot of curiosity and you know, that's, that's, it's probably not going to stop there. Right. Uh, you know, we're always curious to work on different projects and different types of, uh, uh, you know, pieces. Um, so who knows, uh, you know, where we'll be next. Uh, if you're looking at the camera, the shark that's behind uh, Nick is uh, is the tile art piece made by Nick. So again, we've, we've been uh, doing a lot of different stuff. <laughs> I see in detail. So in, in this case, somebody asked, which is your favorite project? So I assume that all of the pieces are a special project or favorite, and this is, you never know what's going on with the next, that can be the evolution of, from one to the other. Right, absolutely, yeah, I think, you know, the, every, every new project is like our favorite project, again, because it, we, it sparks our curiosity as to what we can do in order to make this different or in order to tell a story with this or in order to, uh, you know, change it uh, enough to where it's going to catch attention. Um, and it'll either be good attention or bad attention because some people are not going to like what we're, how we're disrupting. And some people are going to be like, wow, that's amazing. I didn't know you could do that. Um, but that's what we like. So um, I think the latest project that did that was Oh, actually, we teased the shoe that we uh, that we did. 
So yeah, this was another, uh, uh, this was one of our recent um, ones that we did and uh, it required some, some pattern edits, um, but we gave it this really, it's, the whole theme is based around a moon cactus um, and, uh, um, you know, so it's got these ridges here, um, kind of representative of a cactus and then on the, uh, the tongue, it has a tongue tag that is uh, pink because a moon cactus sprouts a, a beautiful pink flower. Um, so, you know, going off of what he, uh, Gustavo said, um, yeah, our, our latest project uh, tends to be our favorite just because, again, like I said, we're always trying to challenge ourselves and, and uh, move into a direction that hasn't been explored yet. Um, on the other hand, I would have to say that my absolute favorite project that I've ever done um, would be the wingtip Jordan one. Um, the uh, funny story about this, um, before I even knew how to make shoes, I dreamt this shoe. Um, I've always been a huge fan of not only sneakers, but um, the very, uh, the, how, how men used to dress in like the 20s and 30s. Everybody was always dapper with their suit and tie. Everybody had their, uh, their top hat or their pork pie on. And for me, it was just um, combining two of my interests in footwear. Um, and, you know, this is what you're left with. Uh, a lot of times I've worn dress shoes that are not very comfortable. Um, you know, sneakers are much more comfortable in, in most cases. Uh, so just combining those two, um, not only conceptually, but to, uh, you know, enhance comfort and really just, uh, you know, this shoe is my style for sure. Uh, so that's, I, I have a special bond with this project personally. So we can say that this, this shoe is your classic. Yes. This shoe is your timeless. Yes. Because all the data, the beauty of leather, the beauty of the simplicity. Yes. Oh, I love it. So many, many are saying, thanks guys. Really, thanks guys. I want to stay here for all the evening and for you all day. So I can also say, let's go and have an aperitivo, have a drink, a glass of wine. We have nine hours of differences. Right, yeah. But really, really, thank you so much thank you. because uh, you were so inspiring, so disrupting, and I wish to keep the conversation going for further, really further tips, further times that we maybe we can go inside of new new projects that you can have it and. Thank you very Absolutely. much. Thank you. And um, if, if anybody, uh, you know, I see that there are some uh, questions. If anybody has any more questions, uh, we always answer our direct messages through Instagram. So if anybody has any questions or comments or anything, um, hit us up on Instagram. And, uh, uh, you know, we usually reply within a couple of days. <laughs> I love your downtown sound. <laughs> and, uh, I got the trains going by right now. <laughs> It's okay, it's okay, it's beautiful. So, thanks community. Thanks Gustavo, thanks Nick, thanks Alex, which is somewhere. Thanks to all the guys that they are working with us. And see you very soon. See you next week with all the community and maybe you will join our webinar of next week. Ciao. Thank you very Thank much. You. Bye guys. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Bye.